Hello, everyone, and welcome to session one of the Wrath and Glory game of Depths of Trollius. We're using the latest update to the rules that was recently put out by Cubicle 7. As such, there may be rules that are different to those used to the old Ulysses Spiel version. I myself am relearning as we go, so expect us to look up a few rules during play. If all goes well, this will be a weekly stream at 9 p.m. on Fridays. You'll be able to catch the VODs on both my YouTube and most of the popular podcast solutions. With that, let's just go ahead and uh, get everyone to go around and introduce themselves. So we will start with uh, Brother Harad. Greetings. Uh, I'll be playing Brother Harad. My name is George. Um, you can follow me on Twitter, which I don't use very much. Uh, just when I start streaming, it'll send out a tweet. So you don't have to worry about that. Uh, that's at Strom12341. That's S-T-R-A-U-M-12341. Okay. Up next, we have Sister Krantz. Yeah, hi, everyone. Uh, my name's Eric. I'm Eric Vulgaris everywhere. And yeah, I'm playing uh, Rosen Krantz, a uh, Sister of Battle. All right. And up next, we have Mr. Torvian. Hi, all. My name's Ben. I'm going to be playing Torvian Voltsgard, a Imperial Guardsman medic who has seen a bit too much. Very nice. Jackta, you're up next. Hey, my name's William. I will be playing the uh, lovable uh, scum Jackta. And last but certainly not least, uh, Corporal Shank. Oh, I'm Kess. I'll be playing Corporal Shank. An Imperial Stormtrooper, that's certainly seen a bit too much. Seems to be a common theme. And it's with almost that, almost like it's 40k. Yeah, almost like it's 40k. And with that, let's go ahead and run our brief introductory video. Like I said, very quick introductory video. So uh, normally what I would do here is I would have the players do an opening monologue, but since this is the first stream, I thought I would reiterate the opening monologue for those who may not have had the opportunity to catch session zero yet. So let's go ahead and uh, bring it on down. So as all Warhammer 40k, or really Warhammer in general begins, we start with the classic in the grim darkness of the 41st millennium, there is only war. The worlds of the Gilead system have stood for a millennia as a beacon of imperial order located near the border of the Segmentum Solar and the Segmentum Obscurus. Until the dawn of the Dark Imperium, these worlds thrived and prospered. The Gilead system was considered a gleaming example of the Imperium of Man's majesty and righteousness. However, the loss of the Emperor's Light that came with the expansion of the Great Rift has left the region without communication, transportation, or backup for the past three years. Enter the world of Trollius. The planet was vomited forth by the Great Rift into the gravity well of the Gilead Star, recently along with one other planet. It is a dead hive world that is locked within ice. The great spires that once housed billions stand frozen and silent. The dense ice that covers the hives risks all but the strongest and most advanced aspect scans. Those pick returns that have returned are shadowed shapes of hive dwellers fleeing in terror from some unseen horror moments before they were frozen mid-motion. And if that wasn't bad enough, the craft world of Ulkari lays broken and dying on the world. To summarize, Trollius is a font of mystery and intrigue, though not without immense risk. That's where the players come in. Rogue trader Jaquel Veronius, the man at the head of the most powerful vessel in the Gilead system, has assembled several exploration teams comprised of individuals from all walks of life. Their goal is to delve into the frozen hives of Trollius in the search of answers and untold treasures. The players are one such team, specifically assigned to Hive Borak. Now, prior to a fateful dropship ride that ended in a crash landing, they had never met one another, but aforementioned crash landing is a bit of a bonding exercise. Now they are doing their very best to survive Hive Borak, not just against the elements, but against strange, shambling, frozen monstrosities. So, we open up today 
with you all approaching a diner uh, along one of the outer roads of the hive. Now, the wind has picked up since you last left off. Uh, it has gotten to the point where you either are having to shield your eyes or otherwise just rapidly blink as just a bunch of wind carrying snow and other bits of debris with it uh, blows into your face. Those of you who have long hair, if you've got any, it's flowing in the wind, you know, very cinematic. Um, but as I said before, uh, last session, the streets are littered with debris. You're seeing uh, remnants of cars, remnants of walkers, remnants of servitors. Uh, you're seeing frozen bodies that have been bisected at the waist. And in general, it's a very desolate and foreboding atmosphere. Uh, however, when it comes to the diner, uh, maybe there's just a little bit of a uh, little bit of a smile that crosses your face because uh, above the diner entrance there is a picture of a bolter uh, superimposed over the rear end of a guardsman, and the words "the bolt hole" is over the diner. And uh, I would say that that is where you guys were originally telling me you wanted to go. Uh, but if you want to go somewhere else, we certainly can go there. That looks like something straight out of my basic training. <laughs> um, uh, Rosen is probably like shouting over the storm being like, no one would be living out here. They'll be in these buildings. Come and pointing towards the, uh, the diner. Let's bolt to the bolt hole. Brother Harad is mumbling something under his breath about how obscene that you know, everything is. I'm just going to sigh. <laughs> All right. But alcohol. Got the right idea. <laughs> I'm already walking Star towards Lines there. Rooms. Apparently nobody else is, but I'm walking towards the bolt hole. Oh, Jack is following. <laughs> I gotcha. So uh, when you enter in, uh, if you'll imagine a classic American diner where you just have a row of booths and then you have the bar that sits ahead of the kitchen that is segmented with that sort of uh, shoulder height wall where you know they would put the orders as they became ready. Um, however, I'm going to go in their combat ready. Of course, you know I, I assume. <laughs> uh, so as you're, you know, you see this classic sort of American diner sort of feel. Um, those of you with awareness three, a passive awareness of three, which I believe is. Brother Harad, Torvian, and Shank. Uh, Sister Krantz and Jokta, I believe you only have a passive of two. Is that correct? Two, yep. Okay. Uh, no, mine's four. Yours a four. It's odd. On your the sheet, for me, it says you have four? a two. My total is four. Your passive. Passive. Oh, passive. Oh, my yeah. God. I'm sorry. No, you're fine. That, again, this is why I asked, because I wanted to make sure we were yeah, all on right. the same page. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You're right. My ratings, too. Yeah. All right. So the reason I'm saying this is because those of you with a passive awareness of three uh, are noticing that there is, uh, in the kitchen area of the diner, there is a more or less about a meter, a meter, meter and a half hole, as if something very hot burn through and spiked into uh, the floor of the diner. And if you were to peek around sort of the, the main bar and maybe into the kitchen area, there's just this great scorch mark that surrounds where whatever this was, this beam, uh, must have hit the diner. Uh, however, there's also one other thing that you guys notice. There is, strangely enough, a door that is hanging slightly ajar that has stairs leading down. So there's a hole in the roof of the diner? Correct. And a hole in the floor. And a hole in the floor. And is yep. it straight up and down, or is it at an angle? Uh, it's at a 45-degree uh, angle. Okay. So I'm going to cautiously walk along the circle or along the perimeter of the hole mm -hmm. on the in the floor and see if I can look down the hole in the direction the beam came from and see okay. anything. You see nothing but darkness, unfortunately. 
guys, it's the darkness. Now, uh, ELH, the holes and stuff like this in these ruins, like they seem like they are, you know, a decade old at the mm -hmm. youngest, right? Like, yeah, these are very old, like weather torn yeah. sort of features. Sure. Okay. Including this damage here. This is damage does not look fresh. Correct. Hmm. Could I investigate the hole just to see if I can get any more information of what caused it? it looks like a thermal beam. Yeah, why don't you go ahead and uh, roll me an investigation? Uh -oh. Well, you know. Cool. Uh, well, that's uh, that's a uh, ruin for me. I'm just going to go ahead and take that now. Uh, but uh, yeah, I'm going to say with only the one success, uh, you unfortunately, yeah, you you <laughs> same thing that happened before. You just sort of go look down the hole and you see nothing but darkness. How does helping a character work? Because I also have investigation trained. Mm-hmm. Um, um, you know what? That's a good question. Let's quickly consult the rules so that we do this correctly. Totally out of character, but I can just see you guys. It was just a really big bolt round. <laughs> I also have to ask, is anybody pointing this hole out? Um, uh, you, how big? How, you said it was like about feet in diameter, right? About a meter, yeah. So about three feet. Yeah, it's a big hole. But soon half half the party that are like examining it would probably draw the attention to the other. Yeah, people. I would say that the rest of you who didn't notice this originally would notice this hole as well. You would notice our yeah our team noticing and then uh, yeah. Oh, what's everyone else looking at? Um, oh, uh, yeah, that's where you could is... kind of look and go. Oh, I, recall, uh, I, like you do I haven't test, found assists it's... yet. Has anybody found assists? I believe that if it works the same way as last time, you make the similar test, and if you pass it, you give an extra die to a person making the test. Yeah, don't you get to like shift sixes to give them extra dice or something like that? Yeah, I mean, that sounds like that. right. Tell you what, you know what? I've got the uh, actual old GM screen. Let's see if it's on the GM screen. Helper grants bonus dice equal to their attribute or skill rating. Helper oh, players may assist one another. So there you go. So that would mean how many dice do you have there, uh, Brother Harad? My total pool is four. So if I read that correctly or heard that correctly, he would get four additional dice. Yeah, I believe you can choose the uh, either or if the quick reference is to be believed. Yeah, my attribute rating is four. Okay. Then uh, yeah, if uh, Shank, if you want to no, roll no, another three, sorry, three. Okay, Shank, if you want to roll another three, you possibly could get enough successes here. Roll well, three dice. Okay. Mm. I'll roll with a minus three because uh, I'm already at six. Let's, let's see how that goes. All right. Yeah. So unfortunately, uh, yeah. oh no, I think. Uh, oh. Let me see if mm. I can. Because I think what it's doing is it's subtracting three from the roll. Oh. It's not. But that's okay because if we just back, you know, work backwards, that's three. The first three dice would have been sixes. So that is two, four, six. I see six successes. Uh, you may shift one of those to glory if you so wish. So wouldn't the uh, yeah. the Wrath Die also be a six too? Well, the Wrath Die you wouldn't roll because oh, we're gotcha. only yeah, counting yeah. the first three. Yeah. Right. Uh, yeah, I'll, I'll shift to glory. Always bank on that. All right. So Shank... When you uh, look down the hole, of course, your eyes have to adjust a little bit, but uh, you look down and you're starting to see almost like a superstructure of an underground bunker of some sort, some form of uh, an advanced storm cellar, if you were. Um, the more you look, the more you see that uh, I'm trying to figure out how to say this. So if you will imagine that there is a very large sort of open area that leads down into, uh, you know, other sets of buildings, other sets of floors, other sets of really civilization. Um, there's there's basically a, a big open area above that. And then if you were to look towards the stairs, 
um, that lead down. You see that those stairs are actually a, a spiraling sort of thing that leads down a shaft next to this open air. So if you have a grav shoot, you could just jump into the hole and land essentially in the bunker. But for, but for everybody without the grav shoot, you would have to take the stairs is what I'm getting at. So, our, so we can't just slide down this 45 degree slope slide? I might have uh, described it oddly. Um, so the hole itself pierces into this open air, but it doesn't pierce through the open air, if that makes any sense. So like it hit the floor and then stopped. It's like a hole in a cavern. Not like mm -hmm. a hole in it, making a tunnel. Correct. It's like a crater. Oh, I assume that brought Brother Hawk, so, his assistant, would have lent me over the hole just so I could have a better look and go, comrades, I think there's a bunker complex. Okay. Seems rather strange in an eating establishment. Well, it is on an imperial hive, so not there particularly is strange. Well, I'm going to go ahead and head down the stairs first because I've got a shotgun, so close range is me. Yeah, and I don't feel like jumping down that hole. Not on my own, at least. <laughs> yeah, it could build character, you never know. Doc is still in the process of raiding the pantry for any alcohol. I don't know if there is any or not. You know what? Let's, oh, uh, that's let's, a good choice. Let's, um, let's see what the uh, the dice decide. Uh, go um, ahead and you roll me... Because if this was like... If this was Black Crusade, I would say roll Infamy. Or if this was Rogue Trader, I would say roll... Uh, or maybe it wasn't rogue trade. Maybe it was I got influence. Too. I can roll influence if you want. Sure. You know what? Let's but let's call it. We're not trading influence. with anybody though. Well, I, I, I was just going to say investigation because I'm trying to find it, but it's up to you. Yeah. And I'll I'm let gonna... you roll either, whichever one you prefer. I'll go with investigation, gonna... even though it makes more uh, it makes more sense. So let's see. Um, since this is obviously tied to some kind of military something, just based on the name and the image, I'm going to start looking for any weapons that they might have in here. For defense i got uh, three yeah so that is uh three successes for jocta so i'm going to say that with three successes and remember because we are playing sort of survival mode you find three cans of preserved peaches so like you know ah. preserved pears but peaches uh you find one intact bottle of liquor it is Guard equivalent, quote unquote. So it's moonshine, more or less. And you also find half a bottle of some green liquid. You have no idea what it is. Okay, okay, hold on, hold on. ELH, okay, hold on. No, we have to establish what that brand is. I'm really excited about it. You know how there's like, you have uh, Captain Jack and then you have like Admiral Nelson, like bottom of the barrel. Like, what is the what is the guard equivalent of that? It's probably like Captain something, right? It's like, or like considering Canadian, this is you know, a, like, a oh God, this is the bolt hole. And I'm pretty sure that this is moonshine that they made here. Mm -hmm. They probably would have made some reference to something oozing out of a guardsman's behind. Or and that's what they called it. Behind. Hole number two. <laughs> you know what let's go with that there's literally on the label it just is a big yeah, number right. two yeah right gold number two okay cool that's all i need to know and it's like it's it's spray painted in that sort of like military um stencil stencil you thing know? yeah yeah right just military stencil yeah. in drab drab brown and od green yeah, yeah exactly number two okay jackpot this is like Sorry, enough for a week it's just sometimes in my brain i'm like i need to know what this is <laughs> no no please i love that's it good. when little right. moments like number that come two. in a little uh, small print on the bottom. Now breaks properly in a bar fight. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Um, and I'm going to start drill to investigate for any loose weapons that they yep. might have lying around. Yep. You're nope, not finding find any nothing. weapons, unfortunately. Yeah, Brother Hod will take up the rear uh, just so no one, uh, just in case if any of the more creatures come back. Okay. Heading down the stairs now. All right. Have that shotgun at the ready. So uh, I am going to move you guys to the diner map. So because I know, uh, Eric, you have to move yourself. Um, so let me know. Player. Ah, you're, if you're in a player, it'll work well. 
Um, so you all should you. be able to see yourselves over here if dynamic lighting is working properly. Uh, you mm -hmm. shouldn't be able to see much, but you should be able to see yourselves. And go ahead and establish your uh, your walking order here. Who's up front, who's in the back, et cetera, et cetera. I'll be up front since, like I said, I've got a combat shotgun. Okay. Brother Ron will uh, stay in the back. Okay. Uh, middle, middle of the pack yep. somewhere. With your I'll, I'll be behind the medic. Might as well. Stop okay. sticking me so far forward. <laughs> <laughs> like, seriously, it's revealing everything. <laughs> Here, I, I got gotcha. you. <laughs> yeah, it's uh I'm I'm getting used to the uh the new way Roll20 is handling dynamic lighting, so there's a there's a few little things that I'm I'm having to relearn. Um all right. So, uh as you all traverse down probably about five or six flights of stairs, um you notice that the air grows actually warmer uh the deeper you go. And as you enter into the quote unquote top level of the bunker, um, where was I say? So if you're up front, so actually Torvian, you and Harad need to switch places here. There we go. So uh, Torvian, when you uh, come to the bottom of the stairs, you kind of look out onto an opening, uh, and if you look around the corner, uh, you see basically rockcrete walls uh, with several benches and chairs set at regular intervals uh, in this space. And you're also seeing that there is a flickering light that's coming from somewhere just out of view. And Torbian, since you have an awareness, a passive awareness of three, you can hear voices. You can't make out what they're saying, but you hear voices. I have a question since we're going into the dark. Mm -hmm. uh, since I can see in the dark with my um, cybernetic eyes, does this... Uh illuminate i guess make it the the passive test any easier for myself it does is there a range limit on your eyes it doesn't say it just says that it ignores penalties for darkness okay is it the uh, one that acts like a prey sense goggles because it's essentially thermal vision gotcha let me pull up prey sense goggles real quick i was gonna say because i think this applies to brother harad as well um so let's take a moment. Yeah, let's uh, let's take um, a quick look. I think Harad would goggles. only have that if he had the armor, which he doesn't. No, uh, Space Marines, um, they have an enhanced ocular lobe that lets them see better. And it's better. one of their implants. Uh, so it says the goggles just they say ignore you ignore any penalties to test due to visual conditions is what the Prison's goggles say. The goggles they do nothing. The goggles they do nothing. <laughs> uh, let me see. Yeah, I guess they're like night vision with a little bit of. Um, okay, uh, so how far, out. how far down are we? Uh, you're about uh, six or seven stories down into the earth at this point. Okay, so oh. heading back up and checking for flashlights would not be. Yeah, I mean, you could do it. It would just take you a bit. All right, so here's what I'm going to roll since I'm not finding it easy. Um, let's say that the penalty for those of you who do not have low light vision. Um, you have a, let's call it a minus two on any tests that involve, uh, sight. Let's, let's do it that way. Damn yeah. humans. Humans never have low light vision. For the voices that we were hearing vaguely in Gothic. I, I can't tell anything you that there's want to, I was going to say, if you want to test awareness, I can give you that answer. I will definitely do that. Uh, I don't think uh, Rosen would be the one, but I think maybe one of us would. I'm up in front, so I'd be the one who hears. That's cool, yeah. Four successes. I would hear it first, so yeah, that makes sense. I have an important question for you, Torvian. What other Xenos has Torvian seen in his time in the Guard? Um, Orcs, Tyranids. Um, let me see here. I honestly don't remember everything I put in his backstory. <laughs> How many of them does he remember? Um, That's true. Now he remembers he these, these are from his time and in the last chancers. Um, yeah, orcs and tyranids and dark Eldar. Okay. So you're wow. hearing something similar to dark Eldar, but maybe the syntax is wrong. 
So for an example, it would be the difference between, say, uh, Mexican Spanish and Spain Spanish, because there's a huge difference between those two. Yes. It's it's dark Eldar with an Australian accent. <laughs> Good night, mate. <laughs> Don't make me do Aussie. I can't do Aussie. I know. No. <laughs> um, so I'm going to quietly whisper it back along the line. It's I hear a speech, hear people talking back here. It sounds kind of like the dark Eldar language, but not quite. Okay. What the hell is uh, a dark Eldar? Sister, yeah, I don't know what that is, but sister, sister's immediate instinct then is cool. Step forward, open fire. It's like exactly what I'm going to be doing. So like as soon as you say that, I'm like, perfect. Um, I, I don't know just I what to do. I would stop like, you because yeah, all you know I see are corners of walls. I don't yeah. actually see the source of the sound. Of so. course. What I was going to be is doing is kind of ridiculous. And the, yeah, like so you stop me. Like, no, we should be more tactical. <laughs> no, hold on. Um, however, because I do have the Imperial Guardsman's up, uh, uplifting primer and I do read through it, Mm -hmm. I do know that the oh Eldar and the Dark Eldar are related to each other. So could I roll a... I think that lets me do a check I to see if I could would. identify that. That's all. Does it also tell you how to kill them in the most extravagant way? the distinguishments way? of the Xenos for theology discussions. You, 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 kill, you, kill Xenos, <laughs> you kill Eldar the same way you kill orcs, with a single laser bolt right between the eyes. Duh. Mm -hmm. <laughs> I tell you what, why don't you roll me a scholar test and we'll resolve it that way. Um, As in your book, yeah, I get a like plus a one bonus scholar. die to scholar intelligence tests. Mm -hmm. But if I get a complication, I can learn potentially dangerous misinformation. Okay. And I think I know exactly how to uh, flavor that if you roll said complication. All right, investigation. Text, text it face value. <laughs> Yeah. One bonus die. For oh, you're this. looking that up. Uh, we should all just check our equipment real quick just to see if anything would give us like flares or, or scholar tests, or flashlights or something. Mm -hmm. I can see in the dark. That's all I got. Yeah, I can. Here's my scholar. See One well. bonus die. Not as good as in the dark, but well. Yeah, I have a writing kit, sadly. Huzzah! <laughs> not gonna help. <laughs> I got a wrath die. No, I, right. no, I got not the wrath die, but I got a. You did a get six. a uh, total of four. So. so that's not enough to shift, but uh, it is enough to succeed. So yes, now that you consult your uplifting primer, there is indeed, uh, you are able to identify that this is perhaps a species of Xenos, or not a species, a subset of the Xenos species known as a Corsair. Corsair. Let me see here. I always have a contents in here somewhere. Uh, da, 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 da. Here we go. Chapter 5, Section 3, Eldar. Jack just <laughs> stares at him like it's supposed to mean anything. Mm -hmm. All right. So Jack, basically, can read? according to this booklet here, this is, this is the sum total of all knowledge of the Imperial Guard on various species and how to kill them. These are very small, stupid, slow enemies and if we just breathe on them wrong they will fall over and surrender so we should do that once we see them and then i put my book away i grab my shotgun and start walking around the corner because now i'm full of confidence because the book doesn't lie i have to ask how how much do i believe of this <laughs> your call well i'm in the imperial guard so i'm going to face part like patrick stewart <laughs> 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 I'm being sarcastic because it also says the same thing about Tyranids and Orcs, and I've fought those before. <laughs> Let's not pick up on the sockets. <laughs> Feel free to uh, start moving yourselves. Uh, I'm sure once you start seeing uh, things, I will describe them to you. Can but, I? Uh, that, okay. red, that red, the red hash marks there, or that is that the hole, or what is that? Uh, that is what is essentially a storage area. Like that would be where you would put crates. Like it's a loading zone almost where there would be crates. And uh, if you actually look up, uh, you see that there is in fact a service elevator you could have taken instead of the stairs. Mm. Dumb waiter. I'm assuming there is actually a wall there. 
Yes, there is actually a wall okay. there. It's just giving me sight when it shouldn't be. I'm going to make a note of that. Nah, it's okay. Oh. You know, it's you have to be very careful with the lining on dynamic lighting or it lets you see through it. Oh, yeah. But okay. uh, checking... So I can see, right? Um, yeah, you see. can see this down here, I think. Yes, I can see. How do I do that little pink? Uh, you click and hold. Right here. There's I'll an make a stealth check. This location right here. And yeah, I would say at this point, uh, if you guys want to remain stealthy, I would like a stealth check from everybody. I was going to jump. Uh, any grenade. bonuses for darkness? Uh, oh, there <laughs> is, but it's I'm flavoring it as a minus to their perception. Gotcha. Don't worry, we'll all be stealthy and then you can ruin it. I mean, that, that appears to be the case so far. So that's, let me see. <laughs> Except for Shank. I don't know why. I feel very bad about being stealthy. Oh no. Oh no. The right. ruin. Yeah, that ruin on Sister Kranz. <laughs> so, Brother Harad, Jakta, Torian, you know, you, you know, lower yourself to the ground. You make sure none of your uniform or equipment is rattling. Dunking a grenade. Well, as you do that, <laughs> Sister Kranz comes down the final bit of stairs and the boot of her power armor crunches something very loudly. A can. Yeah, I was going to say like a like a beer can almost. You just hear a crack. And those of you that can see in the darkness, um, you see uh, a lithe figure um, that is supposedly standing near a light source because the light on them is flickering but at the sound of the crunch they immediately turn in your direction and bring up their weapons so we're going to go ahead and move into initiative order so I complete throwing the grenade that I was already throwing <laughs> yeah that'll be your turn uh, but let me just get everybody into turn order Let's see, put that there, give the Corsairs a turn. Wonderful. All right, so you want to act first, Torbian, is what I'm I was, getting? I was saying that should be a in surprise round because I was throwing that before she even finished moving down the stairs. Tell you what, let's let's do it this way. Uh, roll me an initiative, and I will roll the Eldari's initiative, and that will decide whether or not you get the surprise round. Um, Let me see. Just base initiative. Oh, it's a three. It's not terrible. I think there's an actual thing. Yeah, there's a combat initiative on the. Uh, yeah, the initiative is a stat. Is oh, I'm gonna I'm gonna click the button. Let's find out. All right. Yeah, you get it. Do get that grenade off. All right. Um, and that's ranged. And I'm just trying to stick it on the ground next to the Eldar. I'm not trying to peg the Eldar with the grenade. Okay. So that'd be. Um, three base to hit that particular point, but five because it's dark. Mm -hmm. So I think so, uh, I think that means you miss, but does that not mean you scatter? Well, I, if if I actually roll, if I haven't made the attack roll yet. Oh, I see. I see what you're saying. Yeah, go ahead. Yeah, I, uh, I saw your initiative and I was like, huh. But no, hey, there's your five. Very nice. So it lands right on top of them. Um, gonna cross out one of my one of my nades. And then how much damage does it do? And what's the area of effect? Oh, never mind. Apparently I don't have grenades. Hmm. Why don't I have grenades? So I'm gonna, paint, I'm, I'm gonna I'm gonna I'm gonna paint there. the picture for everybody. Torvian starts fumbling with something, and then you see him make a motion of just ha! <laughs> Did you throw Nothing. your canteen? There we go. You know what? I'm spending two ruin. You throw your canteen. The canteen <laughs> has landed next to the Corsair. The Corsair looks down at it. And if you could understand Eldar, there would be something along the lines of the fuck. But since you don't understand Eldar, you know, you're just going to have to draw your own conclusions. Doctor watches all of this because he can see everything in the dark. What do you do that for? Uh, I thought it was... a. Well uh, it, uh, it's full of alcohol. So if anybody has a flamer, light them on fire. 
That's a waste of perfectly good alcohol. <laughs> Reasons. All right. For the so, emperor. <laughs> I uh, I'm actually going to spend one ruin. So uh, the Eldar can go first. And uh, the Eldar is just going to kind of kick your canteen into the darkness as uh, he steps up next to what looks to be a wall. Uh, so, like, there's these booths uh, in the middle of the space that are blocking pure line of sight. Um, but these booths are for single occupants. So it's... um. It's almost like those cubby holes you would see at a library where, you know, this, the little study little areas, but Is it's right here. Yes. Okay. Cause he's, he, he was half in shadow before. Now he's completely revealed to me. Yeah. 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 He's, he's moving around this blocker okay. here. I can't see anything there. That's pitch black. Yeah. That's by design. Okay. Um, but this Corsair does step around. Uh, he does look at the two in front, Corporal Shank and Torbian. Uh, Shank, I'm going to say you are pretty much in the open, so he's going to go for you. Uh-oh. Hang on to your butts. I believe a seven hits you. <gasps> yeah, a seven would hit me. All right. So uh, you would be taking eight damage, uh, no armor penetration. Uh, remember, right. though, you can roll to soak. If Hold on be. just a sec. I don't um, have to. Um, I can tank that. Uh, what's my... my There's a total of seven damage, again. or...? A total of eight damage. Eight damage. Our resilience of nine, so that doesn't do anything. Ah, yeah, that yeah. wouldn't do anything. Okay. So the uh, the last blaster hits your armor, and you just kind of look down and go... The yeah, for protects. Yeah. There you go. It's uh, It's now the player's turn, though, so which one of you would like to act next? No, oh, shoot. I've been shot at. <laughs> I don't take kindly to that. Yeah, you may certainly fire back. <laughs> Seven is more than sufficient to hit them. Woo! In fact, uh, you could it's, potentially you shift yeah. both of those sixes. Yeah, I'm going to shift both of those to extra damage. Okay. Let's try to figure out how to do that. You want to shift one to glory for a little? No, I want it dead. <laughs> <laughs> Be very greedy. All right, I'm just trying to figure out how to uh, actually get the extra extra dice. Um, if you have it set up in your weapon block, uh, you would do the DBD modifier, the DBD column. Damage yeah, I see. Die. So I'll add that to two, and we'll roll the damage. Wow. Yeah, that's a that's a dead Eldar. Uh, so, how would you like to describe this Eldar Let going it. down? Because I'd like to uh, like to give you that ability. Right. So he hits me in the chest. I'm like, Ugh. so I hit, so without having to pull the gun to aim, I just hit fire, hit him in the chest, and hope and the last blast just annihilates his chest. I love it. So uh, he looks down, and there's just literally a hole through him, and. You see him start to reach for the spirit stone around his neck, but he keels over backwards and hits the ground with a thud uh, before he can complete the motion. Uh, is there anything else you'd like to do on your turn? Say uh, move or... Is there any... I think there's two blocks away. Some block... Uh, how do they... Are there crates? Uh, over here? Yeah. Uh, that would be a table with chairs. You could potentially hide behind it. Well... Chair's a chair, so it's partial cover, I'll take it. Mm -hmm. So I'll just move there and end my turn. Okay. So, uh, good news for Shank, because you got behind the chair, but on the Eldar's turn, uh, one of them is going to step out of the darkness and is going to see Torvian, Jacta, Sister Krantz. A nice line right now. Uh, so, uh, he is going to, uh, not use his last blaster, but he is going to instead use his shuriken pistol. So, let's see, uh, of course, I believe he can only hit one of you, but again, let's, let's consult the rules here. Check and see if he can salvo with this. Well, I don't think he has line of sight to the people behind me. This is also true. Let me see. 
Uh, yeah, if he's below, you'd have to be looking up and probably only see one. Ah, I see, yes. So, yeah, let's say that he is only just going to do the one shot at Torvian then. All right, so, Torvian, what is your defense? Um, two. Well, I got two. Dang it. Wow. No! So, uh, as the Eldari Shuriken Pistol uh, vomits forth these swirling, deadly vortexes of metal at you, or are they Wraithbone? I think they might be Wraithbone. Either way, deadly projectiles flying in your direction. You're going to take a grand total of... Uh, 10 damage, but rending 3. And let me just double check what rending does. I think you have to push for rending to do anything. Yeah, you have to shift, I believe. And then I didn't roll enough to shift, so yeah, the rending does not come into play here. So just 10. Um, I think my resilience is only 7. Alright, so you could roll determination to try to soak that into shock. Okay, so hold on a sec. All right, so on my character sheet it says eleven slash seven. Mm-hmm. Oh, so is seven is my no? You what armor are you wearing? I'm wearing regular flak ar flak armor. Yeah. And I think that's just a plus three. I think it's four? No, it's plus three. Four oh, is okay. carapace armor. Yeah. What's your and then my toughness, it would be my toughness, which is only a th which is a three, so where would the seven be coming from? Let me look That's at your question. sheet here. Should have a resilience of six then. Let's see, where is it? Oh no, seven. You should have a resilience of seven. Oh right, because your resilience is toughness plus one. That's right. Okay. So mm -hmm. I take a total of three and you could soak it if you want to. Yeah, you could soak it. Um, I'm going to okay. have to because I've only got freaking six wounds. So three determination, right? Yep. You would just, uh, there should be a button for you to push for the determination. It's under rolls. Um, there it is. All right. So you are able to soak two of that into your shock. And unfortunately, you still have the one wound left over. Um, and then as soon as that hits me and I take that wound, I say, don't worry, guys, the bone stopped it <laughs> and activate my gallows humor, mm -hmm. which allows me to restore everybody some shock, including myself. Um, ta -ta 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 -ta. I roll a fellowship. And my fellowship is a three. And then everybody gets what, the number of icons I roll plus one. That's perfect, Ben. <laughs> I love it. Yeah, that's that's perfect. Really good, actually. Love it. Oh, no. Oh, no. <laughs> good, but also not good. I'm just going to take that there, Ruin. Uh, How do you mess up a joke? <laughs> Don't worry, guys. It, it, uh, uh, but, uh, um, oh, I got it. The bone stopped it. So you say this awkwardly, and yes, you do get uh, three shock back because you it's, did it's roll the three. icons. It's the icons plus one. Okay, so you get four. Um, so I think everybody's back up to full shock. Um, but the <laughs> I'm ruin. I'm using that. I'm just letting everybody know. <laughs> the uh, the ruin effect on that. I'm going to say is the Eldari. Uh, actually switch to low gothic and uh, on their turn uh, they are going to have an advantage as they are going to attempt an interaction attack on you and this Boy. is cool because I really like interaction attacks I disagree with this very strongly okay. <laughs> so this using words <laughs> so this Eldari I think you can maybe see him he's sort of hiding behind the bit of cover over here to the west or to the yeah, east yeah I see two Eldari there Okay, so the one that's uh, creeping up uh, out from cover just sort of peeks around and says, Monkai, you say that it stopped the bone, but have you heard the one about Prince Albert? No, I haven't heard that one. Well, to put it bluntly, I fucked your mother. 
And I would like you to roll me a fellowship, please. And th this is a character because, again, Eldari doesn't know a whole lot of low gothic. He only has a fellowship of two, but he's going to try it anyway. Ah, one. Is this everybody? Uh, no, that's just him. Just okay. him. So, correct me if I'm wrong, but on a tie, the tie goes to the actor, which would be mm -hmm. the Eldari. Um, yeah. Just like an attack. Yeah, so I think what happens is the interaction attack is successful. Torvian, you effectively feel uh, rather inadequate about now. Perhaps you were questioning your faith in your mother or something to that regard. So is and it going to reduce the joke my was defense, that bad. or is it going to You know, however, however you want to flavor it. But the actual uh, modifier to that is, I believe... Um, what is it? It's either hindered or vulnerable. Yeah, vulnerable or hindered. So let me look those up real quick. Hindered makes it so that it's plus one DN to all of my tests for one round. Vulnerable reduces my defense by one. Ooh, both so tasty. Uh, let's do hindered. Okay. But uh, it is the player's turn again. Can I take it, please? Sure, what I've you got? I've got something for I these guys. Means. One, two, three, four, and um, let me see. I'm going to take a, do I need to? All right, my combat shotgun. All right, spread. When, in, when fired at close range, a spread weapon could hit any number of targets in a radius of three meters. So I think I can hit both of those guys with one oh, yeah. shot. Oh, yeah. Um, I'm also within close range, which gives me one additional die to my attack. And so, yeah, I'm just going, and um, I'm also, it's a rapid fire weapon, so I get an additional die from that as well, correct? Sounds yeah, right. You're within the minimum range. Assumingly. Yeah, he, he's in range. Okay, so that's yeah, going when, to When you're be... in short range, you get the rapid fire benefit. An attack roll of two additionals. Okay, so regular attack roll with two additional dice. Then, uh... wow, all of that, and I got four. Yeah, well, uh, I love four, myself. Yeah, I was gonna say four is just enough <laughs> to succeed. Not enough okay. to shift, but just enough to succeed. Um, base damage of nine plus one extra die. What? So nine damage going at both of them. Yeah. So you pull out your shotgun, wanting to avenge the honor of your mother, perhaps. And uh, you basically fire indiscriminately at them. And uh, much like a clay pigeon, uh, you turn them into uh, crystalline bits, as it were. They crumble and die, making the uh, Starcraft zealot. <laughs> Talk about my mama one more time. <laughs> Brother Hada says, don't worry, they don't have the necessary parts to have intercourse with your mother. You want to check? <laughs> she only liked black guys anyway. How do you know? <laughs> how do you know so much about the, what they do and do not have? Here's I've Zeno's. taken more than a couple apart. <laughs> I feel it's like this pictures. by hand. hand. Like just my I, gun I, out looking into the darkness. Yeah, I was going to say, so before you move, Krantz, it is going to be uh, the Eldar's turn still, because there are more of oh. them. I bet. There are more There's always them. more. So from the south, like uh, can you guys see this Eldar? Just about. I can. Uh, he just came into my line of sight. Okay. I can't see anything. I've been staring yeah. at Sister Krantz this entire time. There's another one to the yeah. south. A virtual gaze. All right. So... Uh, Torvian, uh, I'm going to say that it's going to do another interaction attack on you. Uh, not a verbal one, because they saw how well that one worked. Uh, <laughs> they're instead going to almost use their intellect, and the way they're going to do this is they're going to go for a feint, where they're going to shoot at your feet, and otherwise try to get you off your guard. Um, so I think this would be an opposed intellect, if you would be so kind. 
can I get any kind of bonus for just obliterating those two Eldar? So I just like, you know what? No, I'm not doing this. <laughs> I tell you what, I would allow you to roll willpower instead if that would be better. Uh, my intellect would be better, honestly. <laughs> okay. Well, you just need to beat it. To, well, you oh, you did get a ruin. You succeeded, but there's a ruin. So I'm just gonna just gonna take that. Uh, I'm ruin. sorry, everybody. I would like to inform you that Renji hates me. Yeah. I don't know why. <laughs> Here's I'm gonna push one of these so we have another glory if need be. We all yeah. have a mercurial relationship with Renji. So. Here's what happens, and Shank isn't going to like this. So, Torvian, you stand your ground, but because you stood your ground and uh, the Eldar was not expecting you to, uh, one of the shots literally goes between your legs and pretty much turns the chair that Shank was hiding behind into molten slag. So, unfortunately, Shank, you have lost Uh-oh. You missed! <laughs> you missed. I wish he didn't. I like that chat. <laughs> well, but, obviously, it wasn't very good cover, okay? <laughs> yeah. But yeah, uh, it is now uh, the player's turn again, whichever one of you wants to act now. I think Sister was acting before she got put back in the corner. Yeah, yeah. Ahead, I was Franz, going to move up. Yeah, I was the intention for the, for uh, France here, for, for Rosen, is that um, I was going to run up there with my bolter out. Uh, and I don't think I might, I might not even be able to see that last person because of how dark it is. It might and be better I, if you went here instead. It's the same distance, but you might be able to break whatever's causing the darkness along here. That's true. Also, I'm fearless. So like, why would I not step forward? So that, that does make sense. However, I probably, I, I think I can see it. Although I, there's like a line. I would say based line. on the angle, I'm no. looking at it on my, on my overlay. Yeah. You'd be able to see them. You'd be able to see them. Cool. Actually, uh, I well think then. I know What's exactly. Your speed? I know exactly which line is causing this Six. problem. Yeah. Can you see okay. now? Oh yeah. Yes. yes okay. I can. So your speed is six, and each of these squares is one meter or two meters. Three. Should be. Oh, one. Sorry, it's one. It's it's one, and I've only gone okay. three. I could go further up, but I'm fine. I'm fine just scooting around. I was kind of like cautiously approaching, like scanning with the gun, you know. And uh, as soon as I as soon as I catch uh, the eyesight of of this um, Zeno down here. I mm -hmm. will uh, unload with with the bolt gun. Go for it. Where my penalties though? So I need to give a minus two to my attack roll, right? Mm -hmm. Minus two for the darkness. Yep. Cool. Um, can I do anything? I move so I can't aim. So that's fine. Five is uh more than enough, and you actually and got a wrath critical there. Very nice. 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 So, so that automatically gives us glory, right? Or is that it, only on regular tests? I believe it's well let's check you know or... well i think it normally means it's a critical and uh there's like a critical deck if we were doing that but uh on a test that isn't an attack wrath critical that's when you add the glory okay but okay, so not on the attack but uh Kratz, when you uh roll damage uh there is a macro that is the critical hit macro and you may feel free to hit that button and we'll add some fun flavor yes i'll put it into the critical hit uh, macro into my bar and brutal capture. Oh, brutal rupture. Mm -hmm. So, oh. oh, I just completely mangle him. Yeah, um, and I I think your base damage on the bolt gun is enough to kill him. So, don't yeah, even worry I mean, about I, I assume, it. Sure, yeah, I would I would presume if it's I mean I don't even have to roll damage. I, I feel like that I just kind of make my point my statement made. Oh um, yeah, I think there's a part where um, in fact I don't even like waste a shot here. It's just like I don't even shoot. I just one single shot, like right into it, uh, right into his head or something. Uh, and yeah, so pretty much uh, his head explodes like uh, an overripe melon with a firecracker inside of it. Don't ask. That was really, really odd. But uh, very that, specific. <laughs> yeah, it was very specific. I don't know why I went there, but that's what happens. Is his head literally just poof. And Keep gothic uh, out of your mouth, Xenos. As you know, <laughs> as I like shoot him in the mouth. Yeah. Yeah. He uh he is no more. Is there anything else you'd like to do on your turn? No, I feel like I'm badass enough for one turn. Very nice. So, uh, there are other Eldari lurking in the darkness. Uh, in fact, one of them is going to move here. I don't know if anyone can see him. 
but he has line of sight on our good friend Torbian. So, Mr. Torbian, what your defense is. I feel like our medic is in the wrong position. <laughs> Our medic has a shotgun. I mean, then you're just going to have to roll with him. All right. <laughs> he Medics lead thing, from the man. front. <laughs> he had a very good opening argument. He you're did. not wrong. <laughs> I believe a three hits you, am I not? Unfortunately, uh, it does. All right. Can I look out, sir, myself? No. Just kind of like uh, smack myself in the face but and again, knock myself over. Again, you didn't you didn't roll enough to uh, thankfully to shift. It was yeah, not the so only so, the ten. Rupture, rupture. What am I? Doing? I'm like I can't even talk anymore. I'm sorry. You're yeah, all right, that's good. All right, I'm gonna try to soak. Let's see if this works out the same way. Uh, determination. <sighs> no, nope, you're able I to take soak two one. wounds. Oh, that was definitely not bone. <laughs> Better than three. <sighs> <sighs> All right, all right. My mom is that way. <laughs> all right, and it is now the player's turn to grin. I'm, I'm, I'm using my. I, I took wounds, so I'm using my my gallows humor. That's why I pointed out the direction to see my mother. So I'm rolling another another fellowship to try to get my one point of shock back, just in case I need it later. Now, is there a limit on that? We have to do damage. It says first, every time I take a wound. Oh well, carry on. Um, you yeah. to kill him the old-fashioned way. Yeah, the only oh, is until he dies. It's a simple action, and yeah. that's all that it says. Simple action, you can roll when wounded or suffer a condition. Ah, uh, so what that means then, if it is a simple action, you actually have to do that on your turn as part of your action. Yeah. How... That's like moving or aiming or whatever. Correct. So how yes. can I do that when I'm wounded? Or do I? does it just mean that I have to be wounded? At, you have yeah, to be turn? wounded, okay. yeah. Okay, I misunderstood then. My mistake. Okay. Again, that's why we're playing out no, combat in this way out. to yeah. catch, catch what we're missing. Sorry, sorry, anyone watching who was like expected perfect rules performance. We're, we're, yeah, you know, we're, we're you learning got to us dance. instead. Yeah, you were learning, you were learning to dance too, all right? So, okay. uh, so the Jocta, previous role didn't mean anything. Not wanting to be outdone is going to uh, advance and try and see what I can see. Now, I'm assuming you can't make a charge against an opponent that you can't see, so he's just going to move up and draw his hand cannon. Well, since we saw where they're shooting from, I'm assuming... More to the right. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, you right. can. You could steer so, him in that direction. What yeah. location would... It, would where did it come? Where did the shot come from? Uh, Contact let east. Me... And that's kind of like, oh, we can't see. I mean, I don't... Maybe we can't see it. We just see, like, the shots going around, like, the you know... If you see the arrow... It came gotcha. Rockfried speaking Eldari. You yeah. know, <laughs> like we gotta, now, gotta go. What? So I'm I'm curious because even if I'm like up here, I can't actually see him. I'm not sure what's yeah, with the lighting. Yeah, maybe we can't. East. Maybe rushing head, we can't see. Yeah, but like we we shouted out contact east as or as Torvin mm -hmm. droning and gotcha. getting shot, and you you would know. So, well, you can me... actually wait. You can see in the dark. I'm sorry. Yeah, I was yeah, gonna I say can... that's the caveat here. Yeah. Is he can see in the dark. Yeah, you are the one person who can see in. No, so one of the two. would I be able to see him from here? Yes. From over here? And okay. I'm going to show this for the players. I don't think this is going to show up on the uh, player like the stream overlay. But you, clear as day, see that there's an Eldari here. And you also see one down I actually here don't as well. see what you're pinging if you're pinging something. Oh, uh, do you see this? I don't think it actually shows up if it's in one of the darkened areas. Hmm. You can... Um, I know you can set individual, like... Uh, character sheets or tokens to interact differently with fog of war or with right the, right i'm looking lighting. at those options can you see this at all i don't know how it works though yeah the mm. green wait yeah, where did you the... ping it no i'm i'm moving a, a green flame around i i can see the green flame stick it in the shadow so we can see if it's actually revealing it doesn't work it's not anything. revealing anything huh you can only see it where you see it Okay, that uh, again, we're learning. You just things. shift ping the darkness if, if that works or whatever. Yeah, that's what I'm thinking or... is I'm just going to have to shift ping the darkness. So yeah. you know that there is a target right there. Gotcha. I saw that. Okay. So if, if that's the case, if I can see him, I am going to draw my sword. Mm -hmm. uh, and let me actually. Otherwise, we'll have to fiddle with your token, giving you like, you know, dark vision, your own 
stuff. So he's also, about right uh, there. Point. Yeah, he's right there. And I think you can move through ally squares uh, so long as you, they are willing. Okay. So. Uh, well, I have a charge range of 16, so... Okay. He, uh, he, you, you basically just see him draw this dinky little... It's a sword, but it's effectively more or less a shank that he uh, just charges off into the darkness screaming, and you probably lose sight of him at some point. Yeah. You got so this, I think, I think the thing we see, I think, uh, real quick, I think the thing we see before you attack here, because I'm super excited when you attack, though, but I'm curious about, because this is like the last thing we see before you kind of go into the dark for most of us, would be like, what? how do you get through Torvian Square? Like, do you like slide through his legs? Do you just like, I, uh, ninja I imagine that like, what he's is the sort of, that you do? He is sort of like darting to his side. Um, sure. Mostly because I okay. would assume that his uh, enhancements allow him a little more maneuverability than the normal human form would probably enable him to do. Yeah. Uh, and he just sort of sprints forward into the dark. Uh, so let's see. So that's bonus dice for charge. And I think that's it. So four. So that is a four. I'm double checking to see if they have the ability to parry. Uh, they sh they do have the full defense action, if anything. If right, they but they this out, one though. didn't do full defense. Yeah, he so attacked. I think that hits he him. He didn't do a full defense. Yeah, so this stuff does, does definitely hit him. Do you have to full defense on your turn, or is it a reaction still? Uh no, it is your turn now. Gotcha. Okay. Um, would he is did he roll high enough to be able to push that six? Uh no, unfortunately not. Okay. Fine by me. Damage. Oof. All right. Well, uh eight. Well You uh, do have glory. You or you have glory. wrath if you wanna re-roll or add a damage. You know what? I didn't I didn't spend uh wait, wrath is the entire pool, right? Wrath oh, rerolls the dice. Glory, you can add a die after you do your rerolls. I'm gonna, I'm gonna spend wrath just because I didn't spend any last session, and I feel like, I feel like I need to make up for that. Okay. Yeah. Just go ahead and uh, click that reroll button. It should handle it for you. Where is the reroll button? Uh, should be that blue thing, uh, at the bottom of the results. Oh, nice. I almost went to hold to you hold to click on the reroll button to ping it. Can't do that on the chat log. Hmm. Well, he got, plus, he got nine this time instead of eight, though. And so. nine is just enough that Jocta, why don't you describe how you uh, eviscerate this Eldari Corsair? Uh, so he basically comes in low and sort of aims center mass and just thrusts upward into this uh, Xenos chest. I don't know if he's if this thing is because Eldar, are they are they particularly large or are they more tall and skinny? Tall and skinny, tall and skinny for sure. There's um, I, if he can, he will. He will effectively pick him up and sort of toss him to the side. Very nice. And I'm gonna roll a GM thing off screen so that the stream does not see. Okay. So as far as you know, uh, combat is over. You may move about the cabin freely. All right, first thing I'm going to do is weaselly sit in a chair that I'm kind of standing next to. Well, that one's Molten Slack, so wounds. you go to sit down and you literally fall yeah, on your yeah, ass. Probably not that, that one. one. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> and I'm going to start trying to treat my wounds. Okay. Now, I know it's a, I get um, negatives for treating myself. Can I assist? I don't have any medical training, but I think I've got enough intelligence. Um, I think for medical, for well, I can walk you through it, so I don't know. I can hold a bandage now. So. Let's look it up because I know Medicaid is one of those special ones. That's as I clean as I most as of the I rules for that up. are actually on the um, kit, not on the skill for some reason. Hmm. Uh, you were saying there, Kronz? Yeah, as as uh, Sister Kronz is cleaning out like the bolt round and like praying to her, you know just make sure her guns already have that part. Um, because I'm not sure if the presence of Xenos provides more answers or more questions. So is definitely provides questions. definitely makes holes in my uh in my theories. <clears throat> I got some and pretty jewelry on them. <laughs> ah. Brother Rod's gonna go by um 
uh, and like check all these doors. Okay. Uh, these like orange things are doors, right? Yes, the orange things are closed doors. All right, I'm gonna. He's gonna open this one. All right. So you oh. open that that door, and uh, congrats, you found the head. As in the bathroom. Uh, <laughs> Not even a physical head. I was like, whoa. It's like, oh, we're looking for a head. <laughs> that escalated okay. quickly. <laughs> um. So it's a gonna be a DN four. It's DN three for normal plus one for treating myself. And if I succeed, it's one wound healed. And for each um, that I push, I'm able to heal an additional wound. Okay. Can we help you at all with this, or is this the only thing you can do yourself? Um, it's, it'd be the same for treating as... It, it doesn't say that it has to be trained in order to use the skill. So that's going to be up to... I'm going to say my... that Medicaid being a important skill that you do have to be trained to assist. I think that'll be my ruling on it. Fair enough. Um, Okay, well then I'm not someone equipped to help you. Someone else will give you the extra uh, die. Or whatever. Yeah. I didn't need it. I'm going to push a couple. Wow. It's quite yeah, impressive. Okay, okay so I'm going to heal myself two wounds. One for the base and then one for the push that I can do. Now, Brother Harad, uh, you did say you were checking all doors. Uh, from what you can see, there is a set of double doors to your north. And a single door to your south. Yeah, I'm going to take uh, this single door, but uh, I was waiting for everyone else to do something since I just done something. Fair enough. All right, I'm going to investigate the dead Eldar, just in case they found anything that would uh, help us. Okay. Because they've been here uh, a lot longer than we have. Take let their me, guns! Let me ask this. Um, has Shank had experience with Eldar before? Briefly. Roll me, roll me a scholar. Uh, this is not for your actual like searching them. This is for whether or not you would know something about the Eldar. Okay, yeah. With four successes, um, you know that the most valuable part, quote unquote, of an Eldar is their spirit stone. I think that's probably fair to give you. Um, so the necklace on all of their necks with a blue inlaid stone, you know, it doesn't do much for you now, but if you take that with you and get the hell off of this planet uh, at some point. I think I've got an idea of where you're going with this, yeah. Okay. Yeah. Or if we find some Eldar, we can barter with them because spirit stones are very, very, they're invaluable to these people. Correct. Right, I'll but take the would, spirit stones. You that too. So that means they're worth something, right? <laughs> I'm just going to roll my head and go it depends if you want to get in trouble or not <laughs> Yeah, you look. I think I think it's a quiet conversation near me or it's like you're like not in front of me <laughs> I'm just I mean Jack face. is like pulling pieces off of his body those, right? he's like tossing stuff over his shoulder that he doesn't look interested in right. do you mind if I roll an investigation as well just to see you may you roll an investigation as well can I assist you may definitely assist oh, I'm going to need it, it. <laughs> yeah, so uh, how many dice is he adding? Uh, do, 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 roll an assist. I'm adding none. Wow. Uh, in that case, what I'm going to say with the only the one uh, success is that you find a single still operational shuriken pistol. Uh, it has approximately three shots left in it. Well, I don't want it because I feel that using it would be heretical. So it would be. I'm just going to leave it to the side and I'm just going to take the spirit stones. Yeah. Alrighty. Smash are you taking the them? Weapon. Don't just leave it. Are you yeah, taking all the spirit stones from all the dead Eldari or just the two that are near you? Uh, if I've got the time, I'll take them all. If I have the time. Yeah, I'd say you'd have the time. So uh, let's say for sake of argument, because uh, we are pseudo in uh, turn order, so everybody gets a chance to do something. Let's say you, you've you moved down to this Eldari down here at this point. Yep, seems seems reasonable. All right. So, uh, Kr or not Kronz, Harad, if you want to check that door now. Yep, I open the door. You open the door, and Shuriken pistols come shooting out of it. Oh. I know like that was sort of leading. From shuriken pistols, or are they just like chunking shuriken pistols through the door? <laughs> little column <laughs> A, little column B. 
Like he's literally throwing like a shuriken pistol and then he's firing one at the same time. You know, you know. shuriken pistol fire shuriken, shuriken pistol. pistols. You know yeah, what they say? Recursive. Corner Deldar keeps... and everything. Yeah, corner Deldar. So uh, I don't think I'm actually going to be able to hit you, but I'll roll anyway. Uh, does a four hit you? Yeah, my defense is only three. Only a three. All right. Well, I believe that's still not enough for me to shift. Um, hold on. I know there's. Rolls. Hold on. What can I do with ruin? Unless you wanna... Yeah, unless you want to do something. Let me check my ruin spends. Let's see. I don't think you can spend ruin on troops. He's not a troop though, so he gets a okay. little bit extra. Okay, I actually can reroll failures with him. All right, so I'm going to spend one ruin to reroll his failures, so he's going to reroll those four dice. Now he has more than enough to shift. We've given oh, you can, enough this session. Wait, well, can, you don't get to reroll the wrath die though, right? Or no, you, you know can what? because it wasn't a one or a six. Yeah, you can. Yeah, my bad. Yeah. So right. yeah, so that is how many. So I had four. I'm now at a total of eight. You said your defense was a three, a four? Three. Three. So I can shift two of those. So this is let's make sure I get rending, right? Because I am shifting. Not also that. a critical? It's not a critical because you oh. re-rolled it. Right. Yeah, I don't think when you re-roll the wrath die, I don't think it becomes a wrath critical. Correct. Right. Yeah, that's right. That is right. You're all you all are right. Thank you. No, again, this, coming back to me now. This is again why we're doing this because you know we wanted to make sure we're all on the same page here. Uh, okay, so I'm only gonna shift one into rending. Uh, the other one I will shift into uh, an additional point of damage. Um, so that's gonna be twelve damage, and it is going to ignore three points of armor. However. Uh, correct me if I'm wrong, Brother Harad, you have a force field. Uh, I do, yeah. Now, I could be wrong, but do not... Are force fields able to um, ignore? No, they let me soak mortal wounds, that's all. Gotcha. Um, what rending does is rending happens whenever you... If, if you push a die, the die mm -hmm. still gets pushed to damage. It's just the rending also kicks in. Oh, so, there's, so, so basically you're short a, a die for damage. Okay, yeah. so I need to roll another one. Uh, I'll just roll it manually. Yeah, oh yeah, yeah. Yeah. Uh, not, yeah, so Doesn't... just just the 12. That's well, still a lot. Uh, so that brings my resilience down to 6. Uh, so I will soak best I can. Mm -hmm. A lot of damage. 4, Oof. 1. So for for wrath that? You probably That's want a wrath. lot of damage going you know, through. Probably want to wrath that. Yeah, I'll, I'll wrath that. That's yeah, better. much better. Okay. Uh, so then that means I have eight wounds. Uh, if you were taking six, no, wait, yeah, six, yeah, I have two wounds. Wounds current. Also, oh, if you current. are messing with your token, the green bar is your wounds, and your blue bar is your shock. Oh yeah, look at that. But yeah, Brother Harad, it's now your turn. You have just been shot in the chest by a scale, scared Eldari. What would you like to do? Um, you know what? Uh, I am going to uh, move into melee range and mm -hmm. do a multi-attack. Stab him and shoot him. Okay. <laughs> wait, 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 okay. Uh, if you kill him. I feel like the scene is just the door closes and we just hear you straight. Yeah, so he steps into the he steps into the closet, closes the door behind him. We don't see it. We just see the door, and then we see like the thumping up behind the door. But that's it. I think that's exactly what's going to happen. To, so brother Harad. Rob Harad of, of of describing what happened. Uh, so this is oh, a plus two uh, DN because it's multi attack. Mm -hmm. Correct. But. But I'm glad you're literally like I'm. Yeah, of course. <laughs> <laughs> That's what happened. So, yeah, brother Harad, <laughs> step in. The door closes. We hear just this cacophonous sound of banging, Eldari um, screaming, uh, some viscera being thrown against the walls. I was thinking about the wrong weapons damage, but I don't think it matters. Yeah, <laughs> it's it's fine. That's that's. Uh, no, those are both attack rolls. Neither one of those. Is oh, you both. Yeah. yeah. Sorry. 
You're gonna, I, was, I just expected to see the 11 as a damage roll it's so high. I'm sorry. <laughs> Forgive me. <laughs> You're fine. Th you there's enough push damage. A couple of those. <laughs> yeah, that's what I mean. I was just, oh, there were enough pushes there. Yo, Our, Jesus uh, Christ. Yeah. yeah. That's what I mean. That's, that's why I thought I just immediately assumed it was your power sword damage. <laughs> that's what I didn't even read. <laughs> Let's just okay. say that uh, yeah. after the banging and the screaming has stopped, uh, Brother Harad just kind of comes out, just flicking blood off of his power sword casually. And uh, if anybody, Jakta, I guess you get a sight of just, uh, you know that one scene in The Exorcist where it's just a room covered in blood and there's viscera and gore everywhere? Kind of like that. Or just your basic horror movie where it's just you don't want to be in that room. That's what you see for a brief moment before the door closes again. You, 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 you leave anything in there? <laughs> That's all the yeah, response. There, there is a dead Eldar in there. You, Nothing of consequence. <laughs> you, you finish Brother with it? Harad, you look a little uh, bloody. Would you like for me to take care of that? Uh, you're more than welcome to. I appreciate the assistance. Absolutely. So I'm going to meander on down. Which direction is this? Because I literally can't see anything to the south. <laughs> uh, you know, if you just follow the bangs, okay. it was uh, to the bottom right. All right. Alternatively, so, uh, now that uh, you all can move about freely, there is a flaming oh. barrel uh, in the middle of the space that is providing that bright light. That you, you mean could right next to where I threw my liquor? I mean, um, canteen? Yeah, speaking of your canteen... <laughs> Nobody's finding it anywhere, even with low light vision. Your canteen's just gone. Damn it. I'd also like to point out that uh, Brother Harad is just flexing his different muscles to just get the uh, shuriken pistol, the shurikens out of his uh, body. I love it. And I tell you um, what, this sounds like. Oh, sorry. I'm doing the Medicaid check just to see how many wounds I give him back. Okay. Yeah, um, we'll do that real quick. It's... And then we'll take a break. Okay. I think I get a little bit of a negative because he's his physiology is significantly different from mine. And I haven't actually worked with the Primaris before. I think it's plus two to the difficulty. Yeah. I doubt it'll be in your medical textbook. Yeah, I let's <laughs> say that you have a minus two. Let's put it that way. Well, plus two to the difficulty. Here's a Band-Aid, buddy. <laughs> yeah, I don't know. I don't know. So, so I need a total of a five. His blood is green and he has a pine cone for a heart. And uh, yeah, you can heal him, and you get. Uh, I'm gonna you could push shift. to heal him additional wound, so you get two wounds back. And this is the part of the show at this moment when, for people who don't know what 40k is, we describe the genetic part of the Space Marine, you know, and then. <laughs> yeah. Well, I don't because it's literally skin deep on this dude. He's... <laughs> yeah, as he's like flexing his muscles, and the the shurikens are literally just popping out of him. You're like. Uh, painkiller? <laughs> Don't feel it. But yeah, There's this that, is... You're uh... bandaged up, you get two wounds back, so you're not entirely... Well, I know most of that's Eldar blood at this point. The blood, it is not mine. <laughs> <laughs> I'm not gonna lie, when you were hitting in there, I just get this image of you going... <sighs> And then walking in there very quietly and calmly, click the door shut. <laughs> Anyways. Yeah. Let's uh, let's take that 10-minute uh, break here. So we will be back very shortly. Stick around.
right, and welcome back to part two of session one of the Depths of Trollius campaign of Wrath and Glory. If you missed the first half, well, the players managed to find themselves a bunker underneath a diner, and uh, Wade laced Wade la Wade, laid Wade, Wade, waste Wade. to a bunch of Eldar. <laughs> That's what you need to know. Also, Wade laced is a good NPC name, though. Yeah, God, don't know. Oh, God. <laughs> Anyway, they are basically recouping, regrouping, and getting a feel for themselves as a team after that whole debacle. So feel free to take it from there, players. Um, so what my character is going to do is come over to these boxes over here mm -hmm. and investigate, see if there's anything useful. Food, booze, um, weapons, ammunition, anything like that. I have, have been a question. Able to get... oh, go ahead. 42. Oh, I was going to ask my character. Uh... Have we been able to get a read on if they have taken any of the prisoners of this hive world? Or have killed them? Any bodies? All the bodies. Who knows what we these found, Xenos are up to? That's true, but all the bodies we found have all been killed uh, in the street from rather mysterious causes. And judging from the wounds that I've sustained, it wasn't from the hands of these Eldar. Hmm. Well, then. I have no idea how we would know this, the Emperor, all his majesty, but perhaps is there a way we could ascertain the strategic goal of these Xenos being in this place? Well, I would mention that the dossier stated an Eldar craft world is kind of crashed on this planet or melted. I meant, I meant in the planet. diner, like below here in the diner. Like, it's cold outside. What are they doing in here specifically? Who knows with these tricky Eldar. Their mind is like a sieve. So they're Xenos. They're here to steal shit, the stuff. Did it look oh. like they were camped out in here, or... Yeah, maybe Actually, they're seeking shelter. That's what I mean. Like, that's what I'm trying to figure out. Like, what it's... Was this a raid? Is this their house? Like, that kind of... Yeah. So what I would say is that in the time you've had to observe everything, and we'll get to what's in those crates in a moment, Torbian, don't worry. Mm -hmm. Um... It, the space does look lived in. Like, sure, there's six or seven dead Eldar now, but yeah, more it looks homie. like, you know, at least one or two people were actually living here. Um, however, uh, Torbjorn, when you open those boxes, what you find is essentially Eldar foodstuffs. Um, so exotic-looking fruits, exotic-looking uh preserved meats uh not something that you would you know maybe take a bite out of but um ah, stuff's all the same peaches. um we could use this to bait a trap guys we have their food we have the technology that does put us at some sort of advantage what are you gonna do tech crap in the crate i was thinking of setting the crate up high and like slightly canted with with a stick holding it up and like a, a a plate of food under it and a string on the stick while we hide around a corner mm. <laughs> i'm just gonna grow <laughs> <laughs> no seriously this is, and i pull up my imperial my, my uplifting primer and a point at because there's actually a picture of that exact trap in the imperial the, the uplifting primer on how to trap food <laughs> I'm not going to mention that I haven't read the entire thing. <laughs> Just like a box with a stick on it, like a fruit underneath. Yes. <laughs> I love it. With my previous scholar role, would I know if that food's toxic uh, to humans? Or is that beyond... Uh... That's too heretical. <laughs> I don't know, actually, if you know the answer to that question, that might reveal some pretty interesting things about your character. I would, wouldn't it? <laughs> I will leave it to fate. I'm gonna be in a position to know the answer to that question, I think is the answer. <laughs> yeah, is the question. I will leave it to fate. I will flip a coin virtually. If I roll a one, you know. If I roll a two, you do not. You do know. You can, in fact, eat that. It's not gonna be the most pleasant thing in the world as it comes out the other end, but it would work as food for you. Now, whether you tell us this or not. Mm -hmm. <laughs> yeah. mm. Well, given the fact we're stranded, I'm, I'm going to have to make a judgment call and go. 
it's edible and leave it at that. <laughs> that is a me as a food of last resort. I say, emphasizing last. After we've done eating each other. Like making a toast are, of how heretical it is. Are we Probably talking better. like preserved fruit or just like actual like un refrigerated or anything of the sort kind of fruit just like sitting in a box like uh trying to figure out how to say this without spoiling the mystery like uh imagine like a frozen orange that's just in a crate so it's maybe in one of those like wire mesh bags mm. but you know it's not like an actual orange it's the eldar equivalent of their of their stuff. but is like the crate or refrigerating it or is it to put it bluntly it's still very cold even this far down like, I did describe that it got somewhat warmer, but it's the difference between, say, absolute zero or very, 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 very cold and about negative 20 down here. They don't need That's refrigerating cool. units is what he's saying. Exactly. Just stick it, <laughs> stick it in the wall? Mm-hmm. I'm also, Brother Hod's going to finish up his inspection and open this other door. This time with backup. All right. Breach so, and clear. Breach and clear. Uh, when you go to open the door, uh, you find that it is locked. And strangely, uh, this door, unlike all the other doors, is a double door. So you can't really see what the locking mechanism is. All you see are two handles and what appears to be some form of a hole underneath each of the handles. I can shoot the lock out if you'd like. I have a shotgun. Uh, what does the door look like it's made out of? Metal? Metal. Plastic. It is a metal door. <clears throat> I'd rather not risk ricochet. I'll just try and break it down. Yeah, uh, strong Corporal, to you, would you give me a hand? Well, I'll give you a hand by standing next to you with a gun pointed at the opening. <laughs> uh, I believe Torvin with a shotgun, can cover us if he need be. Mm, two guns They'll are better than one. Meander over here and stand behind them. Okay. All right, Brother Harad, I'd like you to roll me just a straight strength, please. Oh, wasn't that what athletics is for? Uh, I'll give you athletics if you want. Uh, it just, that's... you know, if you did strength, the DN is something, and if you did athletics, the, the DN is different. Five is enough. In fact, you could shift that for a point of glory. I will. All right. Or just so, break the door down faster. <laughs> yeah, if you really wanted to be super fast about it. Uh, uh, so, the knocked over. Uh, when you kick in the door, uh, what you see immediately on the other side is bound to a table, uh, much like the tables outside in the rest of this area. Uh, bound and gagged, is a Eldar um, wearing different colors and different symbology than the Corsairs were. And as you come in, they sort of look, you know, strain their head up just a little bit to get a look at you and go, Well, this kill that one too? Not yet. I don't think this one was their friend. Either that or they're in some just into some kinky stuff. Like I said, mine's like sieves. So everything slips by? All right, I'm going to edge closer and try and remove the gag. Okay. I mean, it's a fairly simple affair. You just literally rip off the tape that was covering her mouth. And uh, she goes, Ugh. Ah. Okay. Um... And she looks at each of you in turn. All right, I don't know if this is worse or better than the people who you've probably just killed. Well, that depends on how useful to you or useful to us you are. Well, uh, where would you like me to begin? What's your name? Uh, my name is Alara. Well, State your purpose. it's Era La Lara, but I just go for Arla or Ar whatever you want to call me, I'll respond to. Good. I'm going to call you prisoner. She grimaces, but nods. 
So what's your purpose? And why are you bound here? Well, uh, this was my quote-unquote base of operations. I am a, uh, I'm a ranger out of the craft world of Ukari. Hmm. And why are you bound, though? That's the confusing thing. Well, I mean, it offers great protection from the elements, and frankly, I don't trust those metal buildings you call skyscrapers far too unstable for my liking. But why are you tied up? That's what I'm a bit confused about. And, uh, you know, she kind of tests her bonds a little bit and says, well, uh, I don't really like saying this, but, uh, you know, I've made some enemies in my many, many passes. They were sent to teach me a lesson if you catch my drift. Mm. But why are you here? Out of character, let me make sure I'm understanding it. So you're basically asking why she is on the planet in this specific location outside of it being her base of operations. Uh, no, I want to know why is it her base of operations? What, wh why, what, what is your purpose? What created a base of operations? Gotcha, okay. Yeah, that's why I ask because I want to be clear. Uh, she says, well, uh, we are investigating the probably same warp taint that you are here to investigate. And is that caused the craft world some trouble? To put it bluntly, our children shriek and are unable to sleep at night because they are waylaid with what I suppose you could call nightmares if nightmares were amplified a thousand times. In fact, I believe your first, and by your, I don't mean you, but the Monkai first exploration teams uh, also reported the same things. Hmm. So what have you learned? Surprisingly very little. Uh, every time we've tried to get close to the spire, uh, whoever goes in loses contact about two clicks in. There is uh, some form of protection or otherwise sensor blocking or communications blocking uh, field around the spire for about two kilometers or kilometers. I can do English today. Uh, Low Gothic isn't your native language. Yeah. <laughs> Those are diegetic slips. Yeah, there you go. So, if we are understanding this right, uh, your craft world has sent you to lead an expeditionary team into the same phenomenon that we are, may or may not be uh, also investigating, and you have lost all contact with everyone you sent in and also been captured by malcontents. That sums it up rather nicely, yes. Sounds more like you're the malcontent if, if, if your enemies are sending stuff or if your leaders are sending these people to teach you a lesson. She kind of like narrows her eyes and says do you not know what a Corsair is? I didn't realize these were called Corsairs. Oh. Wow. Now that I've heard the word, I kind of get it. Yeah, they're uh, they're what uh, you would call pirates or privateers or uh, what's that word? Uh, a mercenary. There we go. They sound like fun people. You mean we could have just hired them instead of... Uh... Mm. So, so, I don't mean to really push my luck here, but... Um... She kind of just motions with her head at her bindings. Are oh, they not tight look. enough? No, no, they're they're plenty tight. Just you know, wish I could be free of them. Why? Well, for one, I might be in a more talkative mood. Uh, two, kind of don't want to die on a table. I guess that all depends on you now, doesn't it? Well, but why would we untie you? 
what what can you offer? Well, Actually, why shouldn't we execute her right here? Imperial law and not everything. Because she's been here longer than us, so she might have information we don't. Well, let me ask this out of character because I think it's an important plot point. What is Krantz doing during all of this? Uh, it's probably been uh, listening, waiting for her to see. I'm kind of judging what our group would do. I don't like mm -hmm. what everyone else is doing. So, like, I know if I have to shoot all of you too, you know what I want to be like the life, like you know, uh, you know, mother superior. -y. Okay, but, um, so you have not I, actually like rounded the corner to show that no, there's a sister here. No, I've been, I've been, yeah, I've been, I've been waiting here specifically. I'm kind of like deferring to Brother Harad a little bit to sort of like lead the group here. Okay. Um, Trusting that the uh, star days are, you know, uh, as as loyal and things, which I think would be a very reasonable assumption. Yeah, I would say that is more right. than reasonable. And I know that you would absolutely choke the life out of one, just like you did when you got shot the first time. So I don't, I'm not, I'm not that concerned, but I am a little bit concerned about. Yeah, like I don't know. Uh, so I'm just kind of listening patiently. So uh, I just have to look up one quick thing because I want to make sure I tell you the correct thing. Ah, here we are. So uh, Alara basically sighs and says, well, uh, you must not be with uh, Mr. J or Jaquel Veronius because the far seer seers of Ilkari have made a deal with him. Hmm. Hmm? Can I tell if she's lying or not? Oh, that's a good point. If you could tell if she's lying or not. Why don't yeah, we have you do... 40k fashion, you grab her and be like, you're lying. Yeah, <laughs> you know? yeah, and then the project's like, no, I'm... I... That's one way to do it. Uh, let's right, have man. you do an insight here. It isn't high, but I'll roll it anyway. <laughs> and anyone who would like to roll insight could roll insight. I think that's fair. Uh, you know what? I've been listening intently. So I'll do it. All right. I see a one. I see a two. I see a three. I see a one. That's Brother Rod's not going to roll insight. Okay. Um, Torvian, uh, with three successes, uh, she is speaking the truth. And you are very sure in that. The rest of you, I leave it to whether or not you feel in character you would believe her or not. But Tor Torbian, you think she's on the level. A man of Jaquel Veronese's stature would have the legal writ to conduct his business as he see fits. However... We are not Jaquel Veronius. We are only paid by and employed by Jaquel Veronius. We Hold on, what kind of deal? Well, uh, food, supplies, protection from the Inquisition. For what price? What do you give him in return? No, the that same is what thing any of us in this dreaded galaxy gives us in the time of... You know, she kind of falls silent for a bit. When the rift opened, were you trapped here like I was? And I don't mean this place or this planet. I mean this galaxy locked away from your uh, emperor. Yes. Well, I'll say yes. Similarly, when the rift opened, my craft world went down and I was trapped on this planet. It's been like this for three years. And if those three years have taught me anything, you take help where you can get it. Hmm. So are you working for Jaquel or one of the Farseers that Veronius is allied with. I am underneath a certain Farseer that was part of the deal making process, yes. It's a very roundabout answer. <laughs> 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 That's a lot of character. I mean, I'm not I'm, I'm not calling anything. 
Oh, uh, we have, I'm undecided. We have no knowledge of the deal that was made, and we are under no obligation to uh, uphold this supposed deal. Mm. I'm going to turn to Brother Harad. I've got a feeling I might want to let this one live. Plus, we've got enough enemies to fight here. I guess What's one I'll... more. Oh. <laughs> that was out of character. So, no, no, this this is actually interesting. But go, go ahead, go ahead, Arad. I I want to do something, but it kind of depends on what you do. Well, that all depends on how useful this alien, this Zeno, can be. Because so far, it has not been particularly useful. Hmm. hmm. So, what do you propose we do? Do we just murder her here? I don't want to stain my blade with any more filthy Zeno blood. You just leave hmm. leave it on this table. Tolkien, how do you feel? All I can really say is that I don't think she has said anything she feels is a lie. But as far as what we need to do, she's given us information that seems to be accurate. And she hasn't asked for anything in return other than, I, I, I guess she wants us to cut her free. Okay. Actually, that's a good question. What would you do if we did cut you free? I would gather as many supplies as I could and leave unless you wish to and I don't know, make a contract with me or something to that effect. Will not be entering in any contract with your people. I'd sell for the low, low price of not being shot in the back. You, uh, you seem to be under the impression you have some sort of bargaining power here. I do. <laughs> I lift out the spirit, spirit stone. Yeah, I was talking to, uh, Harad was talking to Alara. But I think Shank still holds up the spirit stones anyway. It's just like, hey. <laughs> and uh, Alara says, ah, well, although you, Rod, if I gather, you might not care for my people. If you were to return those, and she motions kind of with her nose at the spirit stone, they would probably grant you a boon or two. Hmm. What kind of boon? Well, I suppose that uh, depends on your price. If it's reasonable, the farseers of my craft world are usually very excited to reclaim uh, the departed souls. But uh, more to answer your first question about what I can offer you. How would uh, information about those frozen shamblers sound? Information is power. It sounds like you should have been telling us that instead of bargaining for your life with it. Well, I had to see... ask, though. This is true. He does have a point. You never asked. I asked for everything you knew. Hmm. This is why I don't it. like Monkai language. It's not very specific. I hold up my bolt pistol and say, is this specific enough? Oh, plenty, yes. I wouldn't, I wouldn't shoot that here. It'd be very loud. <laughs> very loud. So uh, she says, uh, very confidently, actually, just kind of you know, locking eyes with you, Brother Harad, uh, says, in a skyscraper, approximately two blocks away from here, there is a facility, a, um, I believe you would call it a sanatorium, that contains the first patients of the outbreak that turned the populace. Or at least that is what we have gathered. I did a medical examination of a few of the bodies, and it wasn't a disease. It, it was... There's some kind of machinery in them. Well, that machinery had to come from somewhere. Uh, don't know if diseases cause machinery to grow, do they? Other way around. Uh, machinery caused the disease. Okay. 
Well, my mind's my mind's made up. I don't know about you guys. I still haven't heard uh, anything. I, yeah, I would like to interject. Go for it. Um, or I, I would. I think Sister Kranz would go something to the effect of, "Well, I think I've heard enough of this, and I don't think we are this desperate enough to debase ourselves allying with such as Zeno. We are not rogue traitors. We do not barter." for the necessary affairs of the Order of the Imperium. Sister, we have crash-landed on a hostile hive world. It's freezing outside. We have limited supplies. Any help would be very nice. I agree with the sister. We do not barter for the information. But Where we I come will from, have this information. We have enough trust and faith in the Emperor that we have all that we need with us. And anything else we need, we can find. We are entrusted and, and, and bestowed with wits and senses to achieve anything. This is just but a the minor emperor, But the Emperor also teaches us to not trust the Xenos ever. Mm. This is a creature begging for its life. And will tell you lies and truths no, a, 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 in all the same breath. It's an elder. That's what they're known for. You right. creature. I'm gonna try and. Can I try and deceive Sister Krantz? If you tell yeah, me, how... actually, you can try to deceive me if you want to tell it's me what you're trying to okay, do. Okay, so this is I'm what totally I'm trying cool with you telling me, and then either I say I would willing to buy that or roll against me. Okay, not right, totally right, right. cool with playing it that way. But thank you okay, for asking. Here's, here's what I I'm really gonna appreciate say. That. We could kill her now, quickly, as you wish, for the Emperor. Or we could cut her bindings, leave her with no supplies, and let her wander the wastes, frozen. She'll die slow, and more painfully that way. What do you think? How would we possibly leave her with no supplies without posting a guard here the entire time? We have the supplies. We can take them with us and burn them. <sighs> That sounds like it's a bit excessive yeah, for the I'm not, situation. It sounds a little, yeah, like it's almost like you're trying to you're trying Torture. to convince me that yeah, it's like almost like sadistic in a way, but also right. it's a way to keep them alive, um, which is kind of interesting. It's like I don't want to be the person who's like trying to play the straight and narrow if we're not all going to do it. Um, so like. I mean, I, I know, I know. There's a point where we we all need to like bend the rules a little bit. So I I, just, I think I think that one of you just needs to convince me a little bit more that like the des that we are this desperate. And I mm -hmm. think we were pretty close already saying like no, like you don't understand our situation. And I just kind of went back. But if you actually wanted to make a roll or something for me to convince me, I'd be cool with that. If, if you wanted to fair. double down on that, Brother Hod will actually interject. He'll put away the, his bolt pistol and say, "Desperate times, blah blah blah." Ahead. We, this creature may say anything to save its life, but any information, true or false, even falsehoods have some kernel of truth in them, will be beneficial. And again, um, it is not, and I, Brother Hod turns and looks at uh, Alar on the table and says, it is not in a position to bargain. I'm going to interject really quick here. Um, said your name is Alara, right? What skill sets do you have? Well, to equate it in terms that uh, you would understand, I say that not condescendingly, but simply, again, your language is difficult for me. I am skilled at long-range warfare. I can shoot what you would call a bottle uh, off of a moving target, uh, over two of your kilos away. Uh, so if she's on our side, that's impressive. If we leave her out in the wastes, that's going to suck for us. So if we are going to kill her, we kill her here and now. If we're going to take her with us, I would recommend keeping guns out of her hands. We have 
yet to decide what we're going to do with it because it still has not told us everything it knows. I know, I'm just saying, instead of the, the, the long, slow, cold death, just do it here because we don't know any, we don't know where weapons might be cached. Sister, I will allow you to pass judgment once we get enough information, once we get what I feel is all the information. Well, Astartes, if we think there's more value in this, in this thing being alive, then I will defer to you, but be careful. We tread a very dangerous path, and we are not rogue traders. I lean around, uh, lean around the Astartes. You, you got a radio. I don't have what you would call a radio, but I have something that functions similarly. I, uh, I look up at uh, Brother Harad. The one from the ship is fucked. Why don't we use hers? We're not even sure if he uses the same technology, so we don't know if we'd be able to contact anybody on using our tech and her tech. It's probably incompatible. So I immediately was going to be like, of course that doesn't work with us, but actually a rogue trader might actually be able to pick up the phone with that. Yeah, really good but, point. but you know, it's Xeno technology. Yeah. Better than nothing. Assuming she uses it properly for us, because none of us are going to know how it works. If you don't know how it works, they could, it could be a bomb. Like I, I look at her again. Where is it? It's with the rest of my gear over there. And uh, because I forgot to describe it when you entered the room, uh, if you look over in one of the corners, uh, there is a long rifle. Uh, there is uh, a backpack or a rucksack kind of affair. And she's motioning at the rucksack. I immediately go over to it and start pulling shit out of it. Okay. No, so, I try to identify the long rifle. Okay. Uh, I forget be... the name of it off the top of my head, uh, but I'll get that to you in a moment when I can glance at the uh, armory. Um, but, uh, Jacta, you actually start pulling out more foodstuffs, uh, more uh, bits and pieces, you know, odds and ends you would use to repair and maintain a weapon. Um, but what you end up pulling out, and she says, yes, yes, that, uh, is a long crescent silver, a crescent sliver, um, maybe about the size of a banana. Uh, it is made of a bone-like material, wraith bone. Um, and at one end, it glitters blue, and the other end, it glitters red. It's a walkie-talkie banana. Eh, more or less. How, how does it work? How do, how do I how do I make it uh, do the thing to contact the ship? Well, first of all, you would have to be psychically inclined, which uh, she looks at all of you. Just very, you know, very, you know, very intently, at least as much as it can. I don't think any of you have the capability of doing so. But uh, you more or less imbue part of your spirit into the stone. It resonates with one back at the craft world, and communication is accomplished that way. So this could only resonate with the stone back at your craft world. That is correct. So we would not be able to use it to contact Veronius. I would simply say that my craft world, again, has an alliance with Veronius. So you say. I, I again say that nothing you say can be fully trusted. Admittedly speaking, she did know the name before any of us said anything. Good the point. information gathering capability of this Xeno is surprisingly good. Right, but she's from the craft world that just came into existence with this planet and we're the first people that Veronius is sent down here, supposedly. So, Apparently not, though, what this one's saying, right? I heard that uh, right? I think it's kind of like offhand mentioned, but I wanted to make sure. Okay. Yeah, you well, got it right. Beg, that begs the question, do we cut her bombs or do we cut her neck? We still need to get more information on the sanatorium that it mentioned, as well as the shambling creatures. And then well, she doesn't look like she weighs very much, so if we want to just drag her with to verify the sanatorium, if it's accurate, we can... Something, yeah. 
uh, trust something her, I would I like guess. to know that hasn't been asked yet would be any survivors, and specifically if there were Imperium who could like corroborate or something. Give me a sec. I'm thinking as a GM, not as her. Yeah. She says, I have not seen any recent survivors. However, when the craft world first crashed, there were some desperate souls that did try to make contact with us. I guess you would call them heretics for that, but that was what happened. Oh, never mind then. <laughs> Again, I'd say we bring her with and check her information at the sanitarium. And if we find that she's been lying, we can throw her to whatever monsters. And if she's telling the truth, I guess we can keep her as a pet or something. I'll leave that to determination up to Sister Kronz. But she's yeah. deferred to you. But I do want to know all the information you have on these shambling creatures in the sanatorium. Well, I mean, if you free me, I'd be happy to show you the way. Again, you are not in a position of bargaining. That was just more a kind offer direction. than a bargain, but... All right, I think, I think it kind of hinges on a little bit of, like, Veron like would Veronius ultimately be like would would Veronius be pissed if we killed an agent of a far seer that he's in alliance with? And if so, do we need to check on that? And if that's the case, then we should absolutely check on it. Kind of situation, or like is this gonna piss off our our the person who sent us here is kind of the ultimate question. I, mean, uh, I, would I don't think say... we I don't know enough about it yet. Right. I would I say know based on what you Sister know. Yeah. Yep. Yeah. Based on what you know, it's very unclear. So there could be consequences to just simply offing her. But there could also just be none. You really don't know. Question. Yes. Oh. Okay, cool. Um, I'll do backstory thing. Okay. Would Veronius have shared any details with us about... Because obviously we're, he sent us down here. In the off chance that there that we encountered any, or rather, not even necessarily here, but in the off chance that we ever encountered any of his agents, so to speak, oh, or keywords. allies, would there be um, any code sort words. of yeah code words basically to effectuate um, allegiance? Tell you what, you give me two glory. There is. Do we have two glory? You've yeah, got three, three at the moment. Do we want to spend glory? I'm we can always get more. I say spend it. I say spend it. Right. Spend it. We can. That, that it moves us past this part of the story. Right. And just so everybody watching knows, uh, that is actually something you would normally have to do with wrath. Um, normally, it is a wrath spend to make a narrative declaration. However, I felt that it was more appropriate to move that to a glory spend. And it is too glory to make a narrative declaration. Uh, same for me. I can make a narrative declaration with to ruin. And, you know, that way it keeps it fair on both sides of the table. So that's that's kind of our one house rule that we've got going on at the moment. Um, but, yes, you do have a code word. The code word is the name of Veronius's long, long lost wife. Her name is Veronica. Veronius and Veronica. Mm -hmm. And that would just be something that we, that's the code word that we say or that we're supposed to get back? That you're supposed to get back. So that we know the, we know the question to ask. Correct. Gotcha. Yeah, usually it's be a call and response type of thing. Uh, is, is Brother Harad basically putting himself between everybody else and the the prisoner uh no brother hot is standing at the the head of the, the table that you know by her uh by her feet just being 12 feet tall okay uh jacta will sort of like stand up from uh going through all of her all of her stuff and sort of walk over and hop up on the table so he's like, if she's, like, strapped down on the table, he's 
behind her, so he's looking down mm-hmm. and sort of kneels down and says, if you and the boss man are such good friends, what was the name? Uh, well, he was the dead, his, his long lost wife. Well, Veronica, of course. Veronica Veronius. That was her name. I just, I, I look up that, uh, at uh, Harad. I mean, she's cool with the boss man. Uh, Brother Harad, after he already put away his weapons, um, he he looks over at Jack and says, "That does legitimize some of the information that we have got gained." Any friend of Veronius is a friend of mine. Could you come help me look for my my, my, my canteen? <laughs> she kind of does one of those, I'm sorry, what? Use your mind powers. I threw it as a grenade earlier by accident. And um, right. I can't find it. Corporal's just going to she... interject, silence you. I'm going to pull out my modern knife. I grow tired of this. It's going to now, here's the question: now. Does Kranz yeah. stop him? No, no, because uh, I think I think what's ultimately going to be the case then is that, uh, uh, and this is what I was alert, alluding to a little bit ago. I was going to mm-hmm. say how it was a little bit of a backstory thing, and uh, I think I'll just kind of offhand mention, saying, "Well, I vowed to get my to myself that I wouldn't disappoint my superiors ever again," uh, and I kind of just will walk away. Uh, so apparently, I got in trouble with people before. And uh, so I'm, this time I'm gonna, I don't want to piss off uh, our rogue trader. Yeah, Just to be clear, I'll... Alara, the first sign of treachery, and not even the Emperor can hold me back from cutting my neck. That sounds kind of heretical. I'm helping you look for your uh, canteen. Your canteen. <laughs> uh, so uh, Corporal Shank, she, uh, she actually leans up with a smile and whispers in your ear, the canteen. It blew up. The Eldar crushed it. So you could let him search, but I'm pretty sure I saw it crushed over there. And she points it out. And yeah, you see the remnants of a uh, a crushed canteen off in the corner somewhere. I'm just going to chuckle and say nothing. <laughs> and see. Um, <laughs> and that, is the scene. that is the scene. So yeah, uh, I tell you what, we're looking at time here. I think that is a good place to end and we will do the sanatorium next week. So, uh, thank you guys so much for playing. Sounds like we had fun today. Uh, For those watching on Twitch and YouTube and all that, thank you guys so much for tuning in. Hopefully you had just as much fun. Uh, I'm actually going to, for those of you on Twitch, I'm going to send you to raid a good buddy of mine. I'm sure he will appreciate the view, so go ahead and give him a uh, bit of love. So, uh, later stream. And then uh, goodbye to you watching the recording. Later, later.